English Year 8 Term 3B Creative Writing. Welcome to Week 6, Lesson 2 of this scheme in creative writing, where we have been focusing this week on writing an article, uh, and next week we'll be moving on to writing a letter, and with speech writing, all the skills we're learning are interchangeable. So don't forget, you can be using what you learned last week into this week, and this week into next week. As always, to take your retrieval quiz, there are a number of ways you can do that. If you're on a PowerPoint or PDF, you can just click the knowledge retrieval sheet icon at the bottom of the screen there. Uh, if you're watching a downloaded video, you could type in the address at the bottom of the screen. But the easiest way, I think, is if you go straight through YouTube. If you're watching this on YouTube, just click the link in the description below. It'll take you directly to your quiz where you'll fill in your uh, personal details, what school you're from, etc. And then there'll be five questions to answer and all the information you need for this is on your retrieval sheet. So you should be all set up and ready to go. So our learning intentions for today uh, are to embed transferable phrases seamlessly into transactional writing. So transactional writing is, uh, as we've talked about, speeches, articles, letters, um, transferable phrases, a bit like what we did with descriptive writing, are key stock phrases, um, sentences or parts of sentences that we can be using again and again in different letters and articles because you'll often have, as we've talked about, writers will often have specific phrases they'll reuse. We're going to try and use those seamlessly, which just means it flows through our writing. It's not obvious that we've borrowed them from somewhere else. We're going to also aspire to adapt and develop judicious phrases throughout transactional writing. So judicious means well judged. It means we've thought really carefully about the best phrase, not just I need a phrase here, but this is the best phrase to use at this particular time. And also not just to embed them, but adapt them, change them, extend them, move them around so that they're ours and that they make sense. So here's our good friend, Dr. Smale again from Thorpe Academy, part of NET. And one key piece of key advice he gives he says is to learn phrases that you could use for any task just like with the phrases we've been learning for descriptive writing like chaos reigns this can be a great way to boost your use of sophisticated phrasing so as we've previously mentioned this is a great way to extend and to uh, add sophistication to your writing so make sure you're learning these and they are on your um, your retrieval sheet so you can be learning those and should be learning those because they'll be part of your five a day quizzes each lesson so our starter task for today is a phrase sorter. So on the screen would, will be these transferable phrases for writing an article. So we've got we as a civilized society. So we are kind of bringing in an inclusive pronoun we, but we're also saying that we're a civilized society. We're playing on the fact that we all know that we are uh, good people uh, with a well-structured kind of framework around our lives. That's a good phrase to use. And you just extend that. We as a civilized society need to be thinking about the future. We've got it's time to ditch the something and dive into the something. And that's a nice one to end with because we've got that alliteration of ditch and dive. Uh, it's quite um, informal language, lively tone. And you just put in two words. It's time to ditch the phones and dive into the future. It's time to, to ditch the uniform uh, and dive into our freedom. A dystopian nightmare is a nice one to use. Just dystopian means uh, a future where everything has kind of gone wrong. Um, so you can describe how if we don't change this, we're heading towards a dystopian nightmare. And watch the spelling of that one. It's D-Y, not D-I. Uh, let's face it, we all is a good one. So let's face it. And again, you're kind of appealing to the audience there. Let's face it, we all like a burger every now and again, don't we? However, too many of these will be detrimental to our health. So it's a nice one to use, as is the last one, which is a little bit of sarcasm, which, which we like because it shows a bit of tone. Seriously. Like, um, teenagers um, love to vote. Seriously, you know, you're kind of using that lively tone. So, for the task and character that appears on the screen, I want you to write down the phrase that best suits them and adapt it to fit that character and that phrase. So it'll become a bit more clear when I show you the first one. Your challenge is to extend the phrase uh, further as well. So see what you can do, and I'll bring the first one up and we'll have a go at this one. So our first task is we're writing a letter to your school arguing for school dinners to become more healthy. 
Um, now, you are this character. You're a teenager, you're passionate, you're intelligent, and you care for the environment. So I want you to spend about two minutes to choose one of those phrases that you think would fit, and I want you to change it, adapt it, add in words to fit you arguing passionately that school dinners should become more healthy. So pause the recording, take two minutes to write it into your notebook, and we'll go over some potential answers when you're finished. Okay, so our character is passionate and intelligent, um, and because they care for the environment, I'm assuming that they are going to argue that they should be more healthy. I don't think anyone's going to argue they should be less healthy, but hey. Um, so for me, I mean, you could pick any of those, couldn't you? But we as a civilized society need to start prioritizing our diets would be nice. You could even adapt it further. We as a civilized academy would be nice and specific. It's time to, it's time to ditch the sugar uh, and dive into the future might be nice. Um, if we don't change our school dinners, we are heading towards a dystopian nightmare. Uh, and the one I mentioned before, let's face it, we all like a good chocolate bar every now and again. However, too many of these will cause, um, a dy you could mix them, could, could cause a dystopian nightmare in the future. Um, so again, oh, school dinners are delicious. Seriously, you know, a bit of sarcasm there as well. So any of those would fit, but do what I just did there, try and adapt it and change it. So if you struggle with that first one, hopefully with this next one, you'll be able to come up with some more ideas. So for this next task, we're writing an article for a newspaper, giving your views on the treatment of the homeless. Now, this time you're a businessman, you're successful, rich, but you used to be homeless yourself. So think about where he's coming from there. So give yourself two minutes, pause the recording, choose one of those phrases and adapt it to fit that person and that task. Right then, so what could we have here? Well, obviously he is going to be, well, we assume he's going to be for the homeless, isn't he, because of his experience. So again, we could have, we as a civilized society um, need to treat everybody equally. You could have, it's time to ditch the prejudice uh, and dive into the equality. Um, if we don't allow this homeless epidemic to end, we will head towards the dystopian nightmare and so on. So, so long as um, you fitted that to the character. I mean, you could also have mentioned his rich business successful persona as well. Uh, let's face it, we all want to be successful and I've made millions um, from, off the back of my hard work. However, if it wasn't for one man and his help for me as a, as a homeless person, I wouldn't be where I am today. Uh, in fact, I'd be heading towards a dystopian nightmare. So again, a challenge for you is could you kind of put two or even three into one? Okay, so this time we're writing an article for a school newspaper giving suggestions on tackling bullying. But our character is a teacher, so not a student, and we're caring, concerned, and experienced. So use that in this task to write up one or two together of these transferable phrases so that it fits. Pause the recording and spend two minutes doing that. Okay, so you should have one of these adapted. Um, again, there's all sorts of ways we could have gone with here. We as a civilized academy again would work there, wouldn't it? We as a civilized academy uh, need to um, reach out for these um, young, innocent uh, students. So a bit of emotive language there. Um, it's time to um, it's time to ditch the bullying and dive into the into our exams. So you could change the to our bit of inclusive pronoun. Um, if we don't change this school, we're heading towards a dystopian nightmare. So again, it's all about changing that phrase to fit the context. Okay, and our final task then. Write a report to the council on the current state of your local area. Now that could be good, it could be bad, couldn't it? I'm assuming though, if we're writing about the state to the council, we're not happy. So now you're an older man, you're grumpy and you're negative but you worked for the council for 48 years. So which phrase are you gonna use based on that? And how are you gonna adapt it to fit this grumpy, cantankerous, negative man who's writing about his local area? So two minutes, pause the recording and press play when you're finished. So we wanna make sure that we're bringing in this grumpy, negative vibe, don't we? Uh, and he's probably gonna be really upset, uh, particularly from his experience of working with the council. So he could put, you know, we as a civilized society could be, you know, we as a, not even a civilized society, we as a um, collective council, because um, he's including himself there, um, should be prioritizing the state of our 
um, once beautiful and magnificent uh, landscape. You know, let's face it, um, we all um, cut corners now and again as council workers. He's bringing that in. However, you have not just cut corners, um, you've created uh, an, a dystopian nightmare. So again, we can adapt and we can add some together. Hopefully the ones you've got make sense and you're proud of. So now we're going to do a paragraph phrase matchup. So a series of paragraphs will appear on the screen and they're all responding to this task. Write a magazine article arguing your views on the advantages or disadvantages of gaming. So the topic is gaming. There are going to be three paragraphs all from the same answer, but they're muddled up. And you have two tasks to complete here. So when the three paragraphs come up, A, B and C, I want you to start by identifying any transferable phrases from the list on the right hand side there that the um, student has used. And then I want you to embed for each paragraph an additional transferable phrase. So you're going to write an extra transferable phrase for each one. And then your second task is to put the paragraphs of this article into the order you think they go in. So which is first, second and third paragraph. So I'll show you the paragraphs now so you can see what I mean, just in case I make no sense whatsoever. So here are the paragraphs. Um, I've left the instructions in a yellow box on the right there in case you forget. But for the next six minutes, I want you to start by going through these, look at the screen and identify any transferable phrases that are there from the list on the right. So really just finding these and I want you to write them out into your workbook. When you finish that, A, B and C then require an additional transferable phrase. OK, so you want to think of an extra one that you could be putting in there and adapting, just like we did for the starter task. When you've done that, what order do you think these go in? Which was the first, second and third paragraph? So pause the recording, spend about six minutes doing this and then press play when you're finished and we'll go over the answers and responses. OK, so to start with them, uh, let's look at the transferable phrases in here. So in the first paragraph, we don't really have any transferable phrases. Um, we do have just imagine there, which is a phrase we could use or envisage this, which is what we discussed in a previous lesson, but there aren't any there. Now let's look at the second paragraph or paragraph B. We do have some there. We have dystopian nightmare in there, which is one of our transferable phrases there. And in the final paragraph or paragraph C, we have uh, another one in there, which is we as a civilized society, which is in the penultimate, the one before last line. So why do we as a civilized society? So we've got two there that we could have picked out. Now then, in terms of phrases you could add, well, there's so many different combinations you could have in there. We've already obviously got we as a civilized society and dystopian nightmare. So what I'd be looking for is for you to use the other three. Um, it's time to ditch the, um, you could have something about ditch the prejudice again and dive into um, into the game. Um, it's time to ditch the rules and dive into the fun. You know, you could come up with something that plays off the gaming um, imagery. Um, let's face it, um, we all have been distracted by um, a video game every now and again. However, it's rare that this actually impacts on our day to day lives. Um, gaming destroys our lives dot 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 seriously so you could have added those three in potentially um, so let's look at the order then so this is the order we should have had c a b and here's why for c if you notice the opening is 100,000 a year uh, 16 million viewers, a number one best-selling book. So we've got there a shocking opening. We're withholding information, a bit like a narrative hook, which we learned about a few weeks ago, um, and also a triple. So it's a really interesting start. Now, obviously the one thing missing here for an article is a title, but we assume there would be a title here. So that's a good opening. And then it goes into very clearly what the article's about. It's about the positives of gaming. The second paragraph we'd have here would be the um, imagery paragraph, the just imagine paragraph or the envisage this paragraph. Uh, a good structure would be start with a shocking opening and be clear about what the topic is and what your argument is. 
Then your second paragraph, describe in detail a scenario, which we did previously. And you can see there that the students used imagery, metaphors and similes to really create a picture in our heads. The final paragraph then is B, because this is the counter argument. Now we'll discuss more about counter arguments later, but the phrase there are undoubtedly, undoubtedly negative effects of gaming suggests that we're going to now talk about the other side of the argument but they do refute it as well, don't they? So it's true that gaming does affect a small minority of individuals, but then so does television, so does coffee, so does sugar. Should we ban all these too? So they're kind of saying, yes, it has negative effects, but so does all these other things that you use um, or you come into contact with. So that's a good order to go in. And I would suggest you follow that, that same structure, that same order uh, for your own writing. Okay, so counter argument then is something I want us to really focus on in today's session. So I want you to write your own counter argument paragraph for the task there in the gray box. Teenagers are too immature and impulsive to be given the privilege to vote. Write an article for a magazine giving your views on the voting age being changed to 16. So we've seen this task before and we've written a different type of paragraph for this. We've written a um, opening and a just imagine paragraph, an envisage this paragraph. But I now want us to have a go at writing a counter argument. So that means we're going to look at the other side. So if we're arguing that yes, they should, we need to start with what other people would say, particularly maybe older people. Of course, there are people who think that young people are too immature. There are those who see us as hooligans and rebels. However, so you can use, I've left on the screen there in the blue box, the example from the gaming um, section. You could be using some of those sentences for your own sentence openers. So use, there are undoubtedly negative effects of teenagers voting, for example. But what I'm really looking for in this are these transferable phrases. So yes, make it a clear counter argument, but what we're learning to do is to embed and adapt these phrases into your writing. So I'm aiming for, I would want you to aim for about three of those in this paragraph. So spend 10 minutes writing your paragraph, pause the recording while you're doing that and press play when you're finished. Okay, well done on your hard work on that paragraph. Hopefully um, you're proud of what you've written. It sounds like a clear counter argument and you had enough things to say. Don't worry if you're one of those people who thinks, I don't know anything about gaming. That's not the point really, just make it up. We talked about this before, make up your facts. Um, you potentially have the internet available for you where you are, you could be researching if you needed to. Um, but like I said, the real learning here was the transferable phrases and how we embed them and adapt and extend them. So I want you now to tally up how many of these phrases you used that are there on the screen. So I just want you to create a tally. So maybe go through your work and underline or highlight any of those you have. I want you to create a tally. So how many did you use? And any that you didn't use, I want you to identify as a target to use next time. So if, for example, you didn't use a dystopian nightmare, write that into your notebook as a clear target. And however you want to show it's a target, you could draw a target symbol, you could highlight it in pink or whatever works for you. Uh, and then in the next session, come back to that and try and use it. Always go back to, before you start the next session, what you put at the end of the last session, because often you're setting targets for yourself. There's no teacher coming around with a, a pink pen giving you targets at the moment. This is up to you and it's a show of your resilience and determination. So make sure you set those targets and well done for everything you've done in this session.